Example number 11. We have two parallel infinite conducting planes. And they're separated at a distance d. Each plane is uniformly charged with equal but opposite surface charge densities. And we're asked to find the electric field everywhere in space. So we'll assume that these conducting planes are lying along the x, z axes, and we have electric field lines that will be along the x, y plane. First, let's pick a plate to be positive and another plate to be negative and put some charges on them. And there you have the diagram. Now the electric field due to the two planes can be found by applying the principle of superposition and using the result that we got in the earlier problem, example number 10. Let's draw the electric field lines. Remember electric field lines leave the positive plane on both sides of this plane and they also will be moving towards the negative plane. And there's the electric fields moving inwards on this negative plate. Now, we also know from the previous example that the electric field, the magnitude of the electric field, is equal to sigma all over 2 epsilon naught, where this is the charge density, and so this is really just a constant number. It's constant magnitude and direction, except on the left side, it's pointing left here. On the right side of this positive plate, it's pointing to the right. And on the negative plate, on the left side, it's pointing inwards to the right, and on the right side of this negative plate, it's pointing inwards towards the left. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be applying the principle of superposition as we look in this region here, the region in between the two plates, and then the region to the right of the two plates. So let's look at the region to the left here. So if we're looking for the place where x is less than negative d over 2, because this distance right in here is half of d. So what we're going to have here is from the first plate here, the positive plate on this left side here, we have e equals negative sigma over 2 epsilon naught. But we also have field lines that are going towards the negative plate here. You have to think that these field lines are constant in magnitude going from all the way over here. Well, to make this a bit more visual for you, what I've done is I've drawn green electric field lines for the negative charge plate and red electric field lines for the positive charge, but they're both all equal in magnitude. They're all equal to this. The green ones extend all the way out over here, so really you have a positive sigma all over 2 epsilon naught from these field lines that are really coming all the way out to here. So they occupy this region as well. And what's going to happen to this? Well, hopefully you see that these electric field lines will cancel out. So for distances less than d equals negative d over 2, uh, we have e equals 0. Okay, now let's look at the region in between the two plates. So let's look at where x is between negative d over 2 to positive d over 2, which is in between these two plates. Now you'll see that the electric fields are both in the same direction. We have a positive sigma all over 2 epsilon naught from the left plate, and then from the right plate we also have also a positive sigma all over 2 epsilon naught. So both of these are both in the right direction, and so they add. And the net effect is that the electric field in between the two plates is the charge density divided by epsilon naught. And lastly, let's look at the region to the right of the negative plate. So for x greater than d over 2. Here, you'll see the electric field of the positive plate is going to the right, right past here, right into this area. So that's going to the right, yet this one is going to the left. So the electric field is going to be the following. We have a positive sigma all over 2 epsilon naught from the left positively charged plate. And then we have a negative sigma all over 2 epsilon naught from the negative plate pointing inwards to the left. And this is going to result in a zero electric field between the two plates. 
or sorry, between on the right side of this plate, and then in between the two plates, the electric field will be equal to epsilon uh, sigma over epsilon naught. So the net effect that you will have is you will only have electric field lines that are in between the two plates, and they're uniform. That means they have constant magnitude and direction. And outside here and outside here, the net electric field is zero. Your final result is your electric field in between the two plates is sigma all over epsilon naught, which was twice the answer that we had when we had a single plate. And it is only between the regions of the two plates and it vanishes to zero when you go to the left or to the right of these two plates. Now again, we're assuming that these plates are infinitely long. Otherwise, if you have finite lengths, you do have some curving edge effects that you've probably seen when we talked about that in AP Physics B, um, the, the edge effects as we call them. And that's it, for example, number 11.